Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to one of my favourite videos of the year. Now I do this every year, um, in about September time, and I've had a couple of comments about it already this year asking me if I'm going to do it again, which means that hopefully it's quite a popular video with you guys. But uh, yeah, I always like to explain why I make this video every year, because I'm not the sort of person who wants to show off. But obviously, as I say, you guys seem to like it, and also I find it really, really interesting to, uh, to look at my collection every year and, you know, be able to look back and see how things have grown over time because of course this collection is something I'm uh, very proud of and uh, it's something I really enjoy looking after so yeah it's something that excites me a little bit as well and of course it's um, you know 300 odd locomotives all in one go being shown in the same video so what's not to love so I'm gonna go through it all today I'm gonna show you everything um, well there is one or two that I've hidden actually because I want to keep those as a surprise I know you guys like your surprises um, but for the most part I'm gonna try and remember all of their different names and classes but of course there is quite a lot of them so if I do make any mistakes uh, please forgive me but I will try not to but yeah I'm not as expert as some people are. Um, also if there's any locos that I haven't reviewed and you see them and you'd like me to review them feel free to let me know in the comments because uh, yeah I always like to do what you guys like to see but uh, I think that's enough talking for now let's get to it I'm a tiny bit nervous this time actually because I'm not convinced that I'm going to remember them all but I'll try okay here we go. Okay, so I'm going to kick off with the steam locos, and uh, once I've done all of those, I'm going to move on to the diesels, but I think the steam is the bulk of it, of course, so let's get to it. Okay, these are my Hornby Railroad locos. I keep these all together for some reason. They just uh, happen to be grouped like this. Uh, so let's get to it. So we've got Tornado, as you can see in the green. I believe that's a, a railroad model, although it did come from a train set, so fair enough. Uh, then we've got the Gadwell with the TTS sound there, and of course Mallard in the BR green. Then we've got the Flying Scotsman, the railroad version and the two D49s um, I think one of those is the Burton and oh goodness knows what the other one is I'm gonna cheat I'm gonna lean in um, so we've got the Cotswold there we go so the, the green one is gonna be the Burton and the black one's the Cotswold then you've got the two county classes one is Devon and the other is um, goodness knows let me cheat again <laughs> Flint there we go one of those I've just uh, converted to TTS sound so hopefully that will be interesting then we've got a couple of the Midland compounds one of those has got the foul attender the uh, the black one and uh, the red one of course has the uh, the old sort of uh, Hornby Railways style tender then two of the schools class locos let me get a close-up of those uh, we've got Cheltenham and Dover of course and uh, Dover is the one at the far end there we've got tender tower in the background and I might come and show you that if the video isn't getting on too much okay down here uh, I do have a few railroad diesels so I suppose I'll do these now might as well because I don't want to come back to the same shelf uh, so of course you've got the class 47, the class 40, that's the TTS sound one, and the warship, the class 42. And then we've got the Patriot, which is Bradshaw I think, and uh, then a very special Patriot, let me just turn the brightness up a touch. Uh, this is a black Patriot, which I don't think Hornby ever did as a railroad model, and I didn't do this, but I found it at a train fair. I think it's Lady Patricia or something like that. Someone's found a, a black body and put it on there, so I might review that at some point just because it's quite an unusual item. Then of course we've got Alton Hall, also known as the Hogwarts Express. The Railroad Black Five. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I just called that a Patriot, didn't I? Everyone must be going crazy at me for that. That's not a Patriot, that's the County Class, County of Cornwall. Uh, this is the Patriot here. Oh goodness, how did I manage that? Ridiculous. I don't know. First strike of the day. <laughs> right, then we've got the collection of 9Fs. So we've got the, the one here, which used to be Evening Star, which has been converted into the one that I drove. It's got a different running number. Can't remember what that is off the top of my head, but uh, yeah, we've got that the model centre to do that for me. Uh, then the actual Evening Star, um, with the, uh, the copper-coloured chimney, of course. Then you've got the regular 9F, uh, the railroad version, and of course the Franco Crosti 9F at the back there. Okay, so that is the railroad shelf let me go back a bit so you can see it there we go yep Hornby railroad locos okay let's move on crikey I can't believe I called a, a clearly a great western locomotive a patriot uh, yeah it's still early in the morning so hopefully I'll get a bit better as things go on but uh, yeah, let's move on to this shelf no particular theme with this shelf so uh, here we go let's go to the end Right, it's a bit dark, let me pull this up a bit. So you've got the S15, of course, from the Southern Railway, the Hogwarts Express, which is, well, this one's a castle, but it should be a hall if they were going to be correct about it. Uh, then we've got the Jubilee, Backman 1 in the green. Another Patriot, the Backman 1, of course, in the maroon. 
schools class, um, the royal one with the uh, the white roof of course. Then we've got the crab, uh, the weathered edition there from Backman. Uh, this one is the standard class 5, not the black 5, similar but not quite the same. The Dean Goods, which uh, looks a little bit out of place here, uh, it's quite a small one isn't it. Then you've got the D11, ED Ockill Tree, I think that is. Then you've got the Robinson 04 from the LNER, the Thompson 01 from the LNER, I normally get those two mixed up so hopefully I didn't this time. The Ivert class 4 there, that's another Backman one. Then we've got the Hornby Gilwell Park, I think that one is, that's a B17. Then you've got the Hornby B12, that's the more modern one. Uh, Backman Midland Compound there, of course in the black, and I'm just going to take the brightness down a little bit now because these are bright. Uh, so of course we've got the lovely James, Hornby James, Hornby Henry and Hornby Edward, and uh, of course here we've got the Royal Scott, uh, that's an old Airfix one. Uh, I am keeping that, but I don't really seem to run it too much because it's not all that nice. Okay, so that's the next shelf, quite a few locos there, let's move on. Okay, doing quite well, let's get on to this lot then. Uh, so we'll start at the end again, here we go, pull this up. Okay, so you've got the S and djr 2 p there, and the one on the end in the blue. 2P, uh, that's the BR1 in the black. And then you've got the City Class, the Backman City Class. A couple of Hornby T9s, you've got the Southern Green and the Southern Black. I don't think that one's BR Black. Then you've got the Drummond 700 Class, which is also in the Southern Black. And at this one, uh, which one's this? Is that the K1? Yeah, I think that's the Hornby K1, isn't it? Not 100% sure on that, without seeing it properly. Uh, then we've got the Hornby D16, lovely LNER 440, as you can see. Yeah, that one's a real beauty, that one is. Uh, then we've got the Earl Class, Backman Earl Class, the Hornby J15, which uh, sometimes sounds like I'm saying J50, so uh, apologies. But uh, yeah, no, that is the J15. Then we've got the C Class, Backman C Class, from the Southern Railway, of course. And also the Hornby 4F, um with the TTS sound that one. Then we've got the Backman G2A um, which is a lovely 080 as you can tell. Then we've got the Fleischmann G4, I think it's a G4. Two of the Adams radial tanks, they're both uh, the Oxford Rail ones. And we've got this tank engine here which I think is a J94 but I might be wrong on that. Uh, we've got the Brill Trolley, Emily of course and a, a Space uh, which is something I've hidden because I don't want to give it away. Okay, that's that shelf then. Quite a few locos there. All right, let's move on. Okay, the next shelf is tank engines, and I am standing up on a chair for this, which means I can't quite reach to the end. But those first two over there are the 14 double Xs. One of those is Hornby, and one of those is Airfix. Then we've got quite a few of the N2 locos, so one, two, three, those are all N2s, in various different liveries. Uh, then we've got the V3, that's the Backman V3. Then we've got Chris, this tank engine here is called Chris. I'm sorry about the shoddy camera work, I've tried to look at what I'm pointing at, uh, which is a 56 double X, I believe, and that's an 062 from the Great Western. Then we've got the Fowler 4P, uh, the 72 double x also from the great western the lmyr class 5 tank the backman e4 the terrier uh, Whitechapel. that one is very nice that uh, just focus again uh, we've got the 6100 class 6100 class is that right uh, it's a great western 262 which makes it a prairie i suppose uh, we've got the lima j50 which is uh, not one of my favorite engines but uh, it's still a good runner nonetheless Two of the Hornby 3F or Ginty Locos, which are very nice. Uh, then we've got the Pannier tank, the Hornby L1, uh, the uh, Web Coal tank, of course. Let me refocus. The M7, of course, just reviewed that one. And do you know, I've forgotten this one. Totally forgotten the class of that one. Um, yeah, I think it's a J something, isn't it? Hmm, mystery. Let me know what that one is. I do apologise. <laughs> That's one that I definitely had no idea. I didn't even have a go at that. Um, well, it's a J something. And then uh, the J50, of course, uh, 635. What a beauty that is. Okay, so that is the bulk of my tank engines. Um, well, it's all the tank engines that will fit on this shelf anyway. So let's move on then. Okay, now we've got this table of locos. So uh, let's get to it. Uh, I'm going to move over here, I think, to start with. So the first one there, as you can tell, it's quite recognisable. A4, that's a Golden Eagle. Then you've got an A3, which is Book Law. I believe that one's the King Class, isn't it, if I can see from all the way over here. Yeah, that's the old-fashioned Hornby King Class. Then we've got Gordon, of course, who's looking a little bit overexposed. Uh, Duke of Gloucester, Class 8 there with the TTS sound. And then we've got the P2, also with the TTS sound. Then we've got the Coronation, that one's without the streamlining, and that's the City of Nottingham. Then we have, let's see, that's the Raven Q6, 
the Hornby 080 Raven, quite nice that, still got to review that one. Uh, then we've got the King Class of course, have reviewed that one, that's the one with the lovely TTS sound. And uh, this one, what's this, oh that's the Backman J11, yep that's that's also a nice one. And uh, then we've got the the SNDJR uh, 7F, but this one's in the BR livery of course. Uh, so yep, lovely Hornby, uh, no, 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 not Hornby, Backman 7F. Then we have the Star Class, British Monarch there, uh, another great Western 460 in the green. Then a few uh, non-British locos, so you've got the Daylight GS4 of course, the uh, the Berkshire, and the Mystery one, and a few people very kindly did tell me what that one was, but I've forgotten. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you recognise that, feel free to remind me in the comments. There we go, that's a Lima one. Quite an unusual looking thing. Uh, I'm not going to have to hang around here though because there's still a lot more to see. So let's move on and uh, see what's up next. Okay, moving on then. Now this is quite a shallow shelf. So all of the tenders for these um, are in tender tower. So uh, yep, yeah, that's why the tenders are missing. But of course I do have them and I'll try and show you those later on. Okay, so I'm going to have to try and recognise these from right up at the front. So we've got the J39. That's a Backman J39 from the LNER. Two more LNER locos, of course. We've got A4s. Um, that one's Silver Link, isn't it? And Golden Eagle, once again. So that's a, that's two Golden Eagles already. Uh, the Q1, of course. Oh, don't we all love the Q1? Hello, Neville. And uh, then we've got the... Ooh, what's this? Oh, yes, yeah, the Manor. Of course it is. Oops. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Made a bit of a mess of that. Yeah, that's the Manor class. Uh, yeah, for some reason I just didn't recognise that from the front. Can you see that? That's the Electro Tren. What is that one? Um, but it's a Barclay 060. That's what I called it in the end, I think. It's just hiding back there. I did well to remember that, actually. Another D49. That's the tender driven version. So that's just the uh, the dummy loco, of course. Uh, a couple of B12s up next. Uh, we've got the LNER green one and the BR blue one. Uh, that's those two, of course. Uh, then we've got a couple of mainline locos, uh, both 460s. We've got the Royal Scott here. And the Patriot here, which uh, unusually doesn't have any smoke deflectors, which uh, makes it quite unusual, I think. Then we've got Sir Nigel Gresley, another Hornby A4, once again without the tender, just like the rest. Uh, the V2, of course, a uh, lovely 262 loco, which is unusual for tender locos at least. Uh, the 2800 class, that's a Hornby one as well. Then we've got the Backman Lord Nelson, the Backman N class. Uh, a couple of 43 double Xs, I think these are. Uh, one of them, well, they're both in Great Western, I think, but one of them is lined and the other one is unlined, so that's quite nice. Then we've got the mainline Collet class, um, one of the older Hornby Midland compounds here. And then I believe these are both B1s, aren't they? The Thompson B1s uh, by Backman. And of course, not forgetting the Gandhi Dancer. And that is actually the only loco you'll see, if you want to call it a loco. I suppose that's a bit generous. Uh, that's the only loco you'll see that I own that doesn't actually run. And uh, yeah, it is totally spent, unfortunately. And I might replace it one day. Who knows? Okay, so that's that shelf. Yep. Okay, let's move on. Okay, this next shelf is very high up, so I'm sort of squashed against the ceiling for this, but uh, I will do my best, but apologies if my voice sounds a bit strange. Okay, so at the end here we have the Hornby Tornado. Um, it's not on the railroad shelf, because technically it is the railways one, but uh, yeah, very similar. Then we've got Canadian Pacific Merchant Navy class, and that one, of course, is the, uh, the rebuilt version. Then we've got the 8F. Um, yep, that's right, isn't it? The Stanier 8F. Um, Hornby one, of course, and the N15, that one's Sir Levine, I think, yep, and then the other Merchant Navy class, Bibby Line, that's BR Green, although you can't tell too well up here, oh yeah, you can, it's alright, uh, the Coronation class, of course, in the LMS Blue, and the Princess class, uh, that one is, I think that's the Princess Elizabeth or something like that, isn't it, in the maroon, then we've got another um, unstreamlined Coronation class, and which one's that? I'm going to have to cheat, aren't I? Let's pull it out. Duchess of Rutland. There we go. Very nice. Then we have this one. I'm going to pull this out as well because it's lovely. Look at that. That's another Battle of Britain. Uh, another Bully Pacific. Tangmere, that one is. Put that one back carefully. Okay, then we've got most of the Thomas collection that will fit on a small shelf. So, Percy, Duck, Donald and Douglas, 
Harry and Bert, as you can see there. Thomas, Bill and Ben are behind each other, as you can see. Then we've got Toby, and there's also a space behind Toby, for that's uh, another character that's hiding, so see if you can guess what engine would fit in there. Then, of course, we've got the E2 tank engine, which is just sitting there, uh, wherever there's space. So there we go, that's that shelf. I'm going to come down off this chair now, because my head is squashed against the ceiling, so uh, let's go down and I'll show you the triangle shelf. Okay, here we are at the good old triangle shelf, and uh, this lot is pretty much unchanged from last time, but uh, I think I'll show it anyway, of course, because uh, we all have a bit of triangle, don't we? So let's get to it then. We've got the three coronations. I'm going to be a little bit more brief with these. So three coronations, as you can see. Yep, yeah, very recognisable. Um, we've got four of the Bullet Pacifics. They're all Battle of Britain. You've got various different ones there. A couple of Churchills, Spitfire, Fighter Command. Yep, yeah, that sort of thing. And then another four of the same. We've got four princesses. Um, we've got Princess Royal, Princess Elizabeth, Princess Victoria. And I think uh, possibly two Victorias. Yep, yeah. we just go around the beam. <laughs> uh, another four Locos. Uh, these are all the Hall class. Uh, you've got Lord Westwood, and then you've got Albert Hall, Nella Hall, and Hagley Hall. There we go. Um, so, yep, yeah, not a lot to say with those. Uh, three of the same this time. You've got the three Flying Scotsman Locos. You've got the one in the sort of apple green, I would say. Then you've got the slightly darker shade of green, which is more of an LNER green. And look, you can definitely see the difference. And apparently Triang did produce these in two different colours. Slightly different. I did assume that this one had just been in the sun or something to start with, but no, they are different. Then, of course, the BR green one, uh, which is obviously quite clearly different. A couple of Britannias, and uh, these have both been overhauled this year with new bodies and uh, slight repairs. So you've got just Britannia and Owen Glendower, or Glendower, whatever you want to call him. Then we've got a couple more B12s. These are the Triang B12s, of course. Um, no names on those. Then you've got two of the Sir Dinadan Locos, although this one here has been painted into the black, so that isn't Sir Dinadan anymore, but they're N15s, as you can tell. Okay, let's go to the back. We've got Stevenson's Rocket. There we go, very recognisable. A couple of the Hiawatha locomotives, um, they're American four, well they're Pacific, so they're four six twos. Uh, then you've got the uh, turbo motive, which has been converted from a Triang Princess. Uh, that one's very cool, that one is. Then you've got the standard class two, I would have to say, is that the two MT? Uh, do correct me if I'm wrong on that. Then we've got a few of the single wheelers on the left. That one, that blue one on the left, that's the one I restored. Uh, it's a bit nasty condition, but it still runs, so that's that. Then we've got the red version, the Caledonian uh, single wheeler once again, but that one is based on when it was in the LMS, so painted red. Then the original one again, the Caledonian livery in the blue. A couple of Lord of the Isles. Uh, this one on the left is in better condition than the one on the right, but uh, again, they both run, so uh, I keep hold of them, and if one of them ever needs parts, um, I'll scrap the one that, that's in worse, worse condition and uh, keep her for parts, but I'm reluctant to do that. I don't want to do that unless I absolutely have to. Then we've got a couple of the Triang 2 MTs. Uh, we've got the one in the green and the one in the black, which are very, very lovely. Then you've got the 2P, I would say. Yep, it's the 2P, which is on the L1 chassis, and um, that's the black one there. Speaking of the L1s, a couple of L1s, you've got one in the southern green there and the BR green, which is lovely. Then you've got the 3F, uh, the DD3F, that one has been modified, I think, uh, but that is the one with the tender, it's not a tank engine. Then you've got, what's that, um, the J, I'm going to have a guess, okay, I've forgotten, but I'll have a guess, J72, I'd guess, I don't know. Okay, moving on, slightly embarrassing, a uh, couple of the DD3Fs again. Um, uh, which are 06 so tank engines of course you've got the one in gloss on the right and the one in matte on the left a couple of the pannier tanks um, i think they're the 57 double x's aren't they i think those are identical they've got the same running number but i couldn't uh, bring myself to sell them because they're so nice so uh, i've kept both of them let me just go around the beam so i can reach the others Okay, so you've got a Triang Jinty there, 3F, just like the Hornby ones, uh, but it's slightly different tooling. And then on the end, you've got the 3M7, so you've got the, the BR Black, which has been, uh, well, that's been custom painted, I think, from a, a BR, from a Southern Green one, there we go, uh, but not by me, by the previous owner. Then you have the actual Southern Green one, and then the original Black version. 
And then we've got 748, which is a Triang saddle tank. And I posted a picture of this on Facebook, and I think the consensus is that although it looks a little bit like some real life locos, it's probably just fictional. Um, so yeah, I'm not 100% sure of the class on that. Uh, but look at those buffers. I've shined those buffers up with the Dremel, and it just looks fantastic. Okay, a couple of the dock shunters. We've got number five and number three. Five in the black, three in the red, of course. Um, always liked those, they're very nice. And uh, of course here, also the 08 shunters by Triang in the BR green and the BR blue, always like those. So let me just come back around the beam. <laughs> there you go, that's the Triang shelf. Uh, largely unchanged since last time, but there are a few new additions. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so this is the Wren shelf with a few diesel and electric guests. Um, for the most part, this shelf is unchanged from last time as well, but hey, it's part of the collection, so who cares? All right, so at the end, not locomotives. Um, these are just some of those Wren slot cars, but they're Wren, so I'll put them with the rest of the Wren ones. Then you've got the Wren 060 tank engine. Ah, forget the class of that. Um, yeah, that'll come to me in a minute, possibly. More of the N2s. Uh, those two are identical, the two green ones there. Um, they're the... Yeah, the L and the RN2s. Then you've got the standard class 4s, which are in quite unusual liveries for standard locos. You've got the Southern one and the LMS, so obviously fictional, but uh, still quite nice to see, I think. Then the, the rarest loco in the collection, probably, the Bullet Pacific. That one's Plymouth, uh, which is technically a West Country class, I suppose, part of the West Country batch. Then you've got the same classes, still West Country, but uh, after they've been re rebuilt. So you've got uh, Lyme Regis and, what's this one, uh, Barnstable, I think it is. Uh, let me check. Yep, that's Barnstable. And then yet more A4s. Uh, I think we've seen both of these already. Mallard, not in blue though. So, yep, that's the first blue Mallard. And of course, we have already seen a Golden Eagle in the LNER green, but uh, still very attractive, the Wren one. Okay, let me refocus. Uh, so the 8F again, once again, the Stanier 8F, uh, the Wren version, very nice it is as well, good and powerful. Couple of Castle classes, um, so yeah, I think those are the first castles I've shown, except for the Hogwarts Express, which was a phony castle, naughty, 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 Hornby. Um, so yeah, <laughs> what's wrong with me? Uh, Windsor Castle, and uh, forget this one, Cardiff Castle, that's it, yes, I had forgotten that, did just read it off the loco. Then three of the City Class locos, well, they're not City Class, they are Duchesses without the streamlining, aren't they? So you've got City of Stoke-on-Trent, City of Glasgow and City of London in uh, the three different liveries of course and uh, now's a good time to move on to the diesel and electric part of the collection so uh, back here as you can see there's a little bit of an overflow onto this these are some of the more detailed locos that I don't just want to put in the drawers um, so that's where I'm going to be putting these so we've got the 08 shunter of course the 04 shunter both backman uh, then we've got also backman the class 25 slash naught I believe then, this is one you've seen during Diesel Month, I reviewed it, uh, the 128, and this one's not actually a diesel, it's an electric, and that's the class 71, I'm going to say. It's not 72, is it? I hope not, I think it's a 71. Very, very lovely thing, that. Very impressive, and it's one that I have to review at some point. Okay, let's move on and look at some more diesels. Okay, we got the diesel tower here, which is going to be great fun, I'm sure. So apologies if the filming gets a bit shoddy while I'm showing you inside these drawers. But I did forget, actually, I've got this uh, couple of strawberry containers uh, full of 040 locos. So very quickly, I'll show you what's in here. Well, 040s, as I'm sure you can guess. Um, so let me just lift that up. So under there, you've got a southern 040 over there on the right. Next one in is the scrapyard 040. Uh, then we've got the Caledonian one, I think that was from the Blue Highlander set. You've got the LBSC version, as you can tell, very nice, and another Caledonian one. There we go. Then we've got Queen Mary on the top, one of the traditional Triang ones. A couple more of those Triang ones in the blue and the red, that's the one that looks like Lord Westwood. And an American 040. Um, can't remember exactly the brand of that, but uh, it's just sort of like a cheapo one. But I quite like the look of it. Okay. This is where things might get a bit shoddy on the camera side of things, so uh, bear with me, um, but hopefully you'll get the picture. Okay, so a couple of 125s here, um, I think this is the Virgin slash Hornby one. A uh, couple of Triang Class 31s, very lovely. Hornby Class 25, that's the weathered one, um, not factory weathered, uh, weathered by the previous owner I believe. And then the Class 35, high mech, very lovely that. Okay, next drawer couple of blue Pullmans, that's the one with the yellow end, and there are a few others which are different to that. Class 52, oh this is it, I've got to remember all the diesel classes now, oh no. Okay, this one is, I think it's a 59 is it? 
Yep, that's 59, looks like it. And then my very lovely Class 37 from George in the Regional Railways livery. And then this one, which is, let me have a guess, 66, is it? Uh, I'll have to check. Um, but yeah, that's the Freightliner one. I did review that, in fact. Now, I'm going to shut the drawer because there are actually some underneath those. So I'm going to move the camera and be right back and see if I can uh, just show you what they are briefly. Okay, you can just about see this. I do apologise, it's not brilliant. Uh, but yeah, that's a dead blue, blue Pullman. She hasn't got a motor bogey, but that's fair enough. Another V-Trains Class 37, that one is. I know you can't see it too great, but that's the grey one. Then we've got more blue Pullmans with the yellow fronts, uh, but these are the ones with the white paintwork instead of the grey paintwork around the windows. And then a couple of the Airfix Class 31s. They're the same, they've just got different running numbers, I believe. Okay, let's move on. Okay, this is the next draw then. We've got the second Class 25, well, the third Class 25, I suppose. This is the other Hornby one, though. Uh, that's the one that's not weathered. Then we've got the 110 DMU, which is a three-car set, so that's the coach, and that's the two drive units. Then we've got the 225, the Swallow one, without the pantograph. That always bugs me. But, uh, yeah, they're electric. Well, I suppose it's an EMU then, isn't it, sort of thing. Um, yep, yeah, not bad. I'm going to put this in and go underneath again, because there are some underneath here, so... Bear with me a sec while I adjust the camera. So there we have on the end the Trying Railways diesel. Um, I never really knew the class of that, but uh, yep, yeah, that's what that one is. We've got an American Loco. Um, I don't really know much about that, um, but I will get it out again one time. But I did review it once, probably quite badly, <laughs> but uh, you can see that on the channel. And if you're desperate to, I'll put a link up in the corner, but uh, it's not it's nothing special. Then we've got little yard switcher from America as well. I uh, can't see that too much, but it's in green. Uh, and we've got the pacer, of course, the passenger cooking pacer. That's the Hornby Glass 56. Okay, let me show you the next drawer. Okay, next drawer then. Uh, this one's a bit of an angle, so obviously there's nothing underneath that one. Uh, that's the Deltic Class 55, but a Lima one, of course. Uh, then we've got good old Rodney, which I believe is a Class 50. Then we've got a Lima Class 60. I think these are all... Le oh, no, they're not all Lima. Uh, that's a Lima Class 60, which someone has very cleverly repainted into an EWS livery. Then we've got another Class 40. Uh, it is the same as the Hornby one, but this is technically the Lima version, so it doesn't have the TTS sound, and it has the Lima pancake motor. Then we've got the Derby Lightweight, as you can see, uh, the two-car set. Uh, let me just push this in and show you what's underneath. And all it is under there, really, it's just the Hornby Class 58 um, in the EWS Red. More maroon, if you want to use the proper word, I suppose. Then you've got a few of the 125s. That is uh, two sets of 125 power and dummy cars. Um, so, yeah, they're just the old-fashioned Hornby ones. Nothing special about those. Now, there are a few locos at the back of this uh, unit, so I'm going to try and figure out what those are and let you know. <laughs> This is where the camera work is at its shoddiest. As you can see, I've got my Amtrak Bobo Loco, which is just hiding there. That's what that one is. And at the back of that one, we've got the Hornby Class 29. Just about see it there. But that one did run during diesel month, so if you want to uh, see it run, go and check that out. But for now, let's leave this unit behind, and uh, I'll go and show you the rest of my uh, diesel collection, uh, which you should be able to see a little bit better. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so now we're looking underneath the Triang shelves, and these used to be full of toys, and as you can see, some of them still are from when I was little. But I've cleared some of them out, and uh, it makes them perfect to store the sort of less delicate Lima diesels and that sort of thing. So, let me pull this out. Alright then, so there is one that you'll recognise, that's the Backman Voyager, of course, that's the whole set in there. Uh, is that the 221, I guess, something like that? Then I think this is Hornby, actually, I don't think this is Lima, or I might be getting this mixed up. Is it? Yeah, no, it is Hornby. There you go. That's the class 86. Yeah, I got that out because I knew I wouldn't remember the class of that. So, yeah, that's that. That's an electric, of course. Let me stick that in. Again, sorry if we've gone out of focus for the time being. All right. Ooh, this is going to be awkward. Thing is, I don't like leaving this without holding it because they sort of fall down. <laughs> so we've got another Hornby electric. Uh, no, that one's a Lima electric. I think that's an 86, I to guess. A couple of class 20s there. Um, what's this one? It's a class 20 something, I think, nor a 33. No, it's 27, yep. Then we've got a 31, that's the uh, the Rail Freight Grey 31. Uh, then that is, that's probably the 33 then, isn't it? Yep, that one's the 33. Earl Mountbatten of Burma, something like that. Then they've got the 73, that's the Pullman one. And uh, this is um, a warship, or a class 43, whatever you want to call it, or is it a 42? Always get it mixed up. Uh, this is, in fact, let me push this in and I'll get it out. Um, I have actually just filled myself uh, 
showing this briefly. I got this at a train fair for £30. It's the Backman one, all-wheel drive, and it's, it's brand new, absolutely brand new. So super happy with that. <laughs> Let me stick that back before I break it. It's not super detailed though, so it's fine just sitting in there. Okay, the next one down, a few more DMUs as well as the Class 26, so we'll start with that. That's the Helgen Class 26, again it's sat on bubble wrap there, so I think it's going to be just fine there. Then we've got the 101 and the 108. So the 101 is, let me see here, it's the one on the left, and the, those two at the end are the 108. So that's that. I think there's just one more actually. Is there? Yeah, on its own. It's a bit too long to put in the other way, so I've put this on its own in here and I'll uh, wait until I get some other longer ones, that's a class 40. So uh, yeah, on its own, uh, Lima one of course. Okay, I'll show you some rolling stock then, but I'll be quite quick with the rolling stock. Okay, so as promised, here we are at the top of Tender Tower, and Tender Tower has some intercity coaches living on it, which is why I'm showing you that. But uh, yeah, very briefly then, here we go, let's go down Tender Tower and have a look at some of this stuff. Okay, it's a tad dark, but uh, here we have the Great Western section, and there's a bit of uh, BR and LMS and that American one that slipped in there. Uh, but yeah, that's the Great Western Tenders. The ones that aren't connected to locos, of course. Uh, this is southern, mostly southern, although I see a little bit of, um, mm, got a bit of LMS there, I think. Uh, yep, yeah, and a bit of Caledonian too, so yeah, it's a little bit of a mixture, but of course I can't group all of my tenders into the five or so drawers I've got here, so it's a little bit, a little bit variable, but nothing too serious. <laughs> All right, ooh, dear me. All right, I think most of that is LNER, isn't it? Uh, I think I can see one princess tender there, so we've got a bit of LMS spilling into there as well. But, yeah, for the most part, that is all LNER. So, yep. Yeah. Going down again. Again, sorry for the shoddy camera work. Uh, so this is the LMS one, and as you might have guessed, it is pretty full, which is why it's having to spill over into the others. But uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll be able to recognise some of them, especially those uh, coronation ones at the top there. So yeah, that's lovely. And I don't think I have tenders in the bottom one, or do I? No, I don't. That's the Orient Express coaches. So I haven't needed to put tenders in there yet, down at the bottom, but uh, when I do, I think those Orient Express coaches will have to find a new home. But for the time being, they're okay just in there. Okay, speaking of coaches, let me uh, go and show you those. Okay, so this is the Sam's Trains coach workshop. <laughs> As you can see, quite a few coaches. I'm just going to sort of spray the camera around a bit. I won't go over everything. Um, but here we've got some of those clerestory coaches. I've uh, just been having my eye out for LNER clerestory coaches, but I've only found one so far. Uh, Southern coaches, LMS coaches, LNER coaches, more LNER. You've got the ambulance ones over there. Blue Pullman, I can see. Blood and Custard. Uh, LNER, LMS. More LNER, some Pullmans tucked away back there. Uh, Blood and Custard, more Southerns, Pullmans, Great Western, and there's also some uh, Intercity behind there, the Swallow ones. Uh, Chocolate and Cream, more LMS, more Great Western, just there. More of those LMS Coronation coaches. And then we've got Caledonian there, uh, both Caledonian and ex-Caledonian actually. So yes, quite a few coaches, I think it's safe to say. But uh, yeah, it does make things a, a bit more uh, interesting to watch with such a nice variety of coaches. So yes, quite happy with those. Right, let me show you some of the goods and freight rolling stock then. And these days, most of my freight live in towers like this, a bit like tender tower. So very quickly, because I am conscious that this video is going on a bit, uh, I will show you what's inside here. So... Let me see if the focus is going to be okay. Right. So, as you can see, most of the ocean wagons are in there, but these are the uh, the wagons, so sort of open wagons. Yep, you get the message with that, I'm sure. Quite a variety of these. More ocean, uh, no, open wagons, not ocean wagons. Got a few uh, spaces there for some more, so uh, yep, that's good. I do sometimes rejig these so that I've given myself a bit more space, but yep, that's fair enough. Then we've got some of the box vans, or box, yeah, box vans, not box cars, that's the American term for it, I suppose. Um, yep, those are the larger wheelbase ones, except for one shorter one up there. Obviously, that's just been slipped in wherever it'll fit. And then I do have some of the shorter wheelbase ones. There we go, that's where the crisp snacks and nuts are, and Kit Kat and that kind of thing. So that's fair enough. Then up on top, we've got a few bits and bobs. 
if you can see in there. Let me stand up. Hmm, those have fallen over actually, but we've got Annie and Clarabelle, the troublesome trucks. We've got my Southern Utility Van. Uh, these are low loaders, which have fallen down annoyingly. Oh, that's okay, I'll sort, I'll sort those out another time. Then we've got some other stuff. Um, yeah, bits and bobs really. Um, the Thompson Friends Utilities Van. Uh, let's see, I've got a, a Tiger, okay. That's, that's interesting. Oh, these are the presents left over from the Christmas train episode I did last year. <laughs> so I might be using those again, hopefully. But uh, yeah, just bits and bobs, really. Bits and bobs. Okay, this is where I keep my tankers then. Mostly. It's a bit messy, that one. There's also a caboose in there and a, a rail carrier and a spare um, brake van. But mostly tankers in that one. Okay, and this is where the brake vans live. Let me show you. Yeah, mostly brake vans in there. A couple of cranes, of course, because they are very big. Um, and you can see Toad up there in the corner. But yeah, you get the picture with that, probably. And then up in the top here, we've got something I've never shown before. Um, mega boxes. I got a really good bargain with these mega boxes. And again, the, uh, I've just filmed myself looking at these um, after I came back from the train fair. So I'll put that up as soon as I've got a Monday special episode spare. Okay, well, I think that's just about... Oh, no, it isn't it. No, it's not it. <laughs> Let me go to the next drawers. Okay, a few more to look at. I'm not going to show you all the drawers on this because there are a few engines that are hiding in here, which are the surprises I mentioned earlier. But uh, let's grab this. I think we're safe to look in here. So we've got the short coaches, uh, the little four-wheeled coaches, as you can see. Uh, there's quite a lot of those. That's all what they are. I think that's all. Yeah, that's right. Then we've got those LMS uh, insulated milk vans, and they're, uh, let's see, six-wheeled. Yep. Yeah three axles on each of those so they're quite nice then I've got the uh, the larger wheelbase open wagons some of those have got stones in and uh, those are the EWS ones at the back there as you can tell yep and then some more at the top well it's not the top but it's the highest we're gonna go uh, we've got some more of those shorter wheelbase um, box vans box cars which are just too many to fit in just one drawer so they've spilt over into this but I have to try not to forget those um, but yeah that's it oh there is a couple of extra boxes of stuff but uh, yeah it's a little bit dark and dusty back here because I've not run any American stock for a little while but as you can see these are box cars and I can call these box cars um, yep yeah, Santa Fe um, yeah quite nice these are pick these up at a train fair for about two to three pounds each um, I've showed those didn't I though in a video once or did I I might still have that one saved up, ready to put out. And uh, then we've got some uh, American coaches, as you can see, and hoppers. And then there's a box of some old coaches in there. I'm still waiting to decide what to do with that stuff, really. Um, but yeah, they're mostly old coaches and that sort of thing, stuff that I wouldn't really run. Um, but if you want me to go through that box, I can't really remember what's in there, but there's all sorts of stuff. Uh, so if you want me to go through that, uh, let me know and I will at some point. But uh, yeah, I think that's just about it. Okay, folks, well, I'll let you go now. That took longer than expected, actually. But I hope you enjoyed looking at it anyway. And of course, don't forget to let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like me to review that I haven't already. But I think that's just about it. So yeah, I'll say thank you very much for watching. Thank you for putting up with me if you've made it to the end. Let me know in the comments if you did make it to the end. And uh, yep, that should just about do it. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out the Facebook and Twitter pages if you'd like to. The links are below. And I will see you all very soon. Alright, cheers everybody. See you soon.